to yawn and closed her eyes for an instant. When she opened them, she was caught in a huge net. She struggled to get free and became even more entangled. Ariel began to cry. Now she would miss the seahorse races. And because no one knew where she was, she might not be found for a long time. I wish I had obeyed Daddy's rules, she thought. Now I know they were for my own good to keep me safe. After a long time, a cheerful circus came along. Princess Ariel, you seem to be all tied up. Lucky I saw you. Ha ha. Soon the swordfish had sawed a hole in the big net. Ariel swam through. Being free gave Ariel a burst of energy. She swooped and swirled through the water. Thank you so much, she called. See fish? Fish. Yeah, where's your book? A few minutes later, Flounder joined her. Ariel, I've been at the seahorse stables looking for you. The races will start any minute. I was looking for you too, she exclaimed. Then she told him what happened. Come on, we'd better hurry, she said. The two friends swam as fast as they could. But when they got to the edge of the racetrack, Ariel stopped short. Sebastian's signs had been set up. Now she could read what they said. Do not cross this line. What do you see? Flounder called, this is the quickest way. If we have to swim all the way around the track, we'll miss the race. Ariel wanted to be a judge with all her heart. The signs were rules put there by her father to be obeyed. What would a princess do? No, Flounder, she said. I disobeyed some of my daddy's rules today and got myself in trouble. Now I know those rules were to protect me. There must be a good reason for this rule. Suddenly, a seahorse stood past. The rider was pulling hard on the reins, trying to stop. But by mistake, we started too soon. The rider called. Good thing you weren't in the way. Looking across, and someone could get hurt. Now I understand. I need to show Daddy I'm sorry for just a minute. You have a balloon.